A few weeks ago, WBZ's Louisa Moeller spent some time on the northern border with Canada and showed us the surge of illegal crossings there and why they're happening. You can watch her story on WBZ.com. Just click on the Question Everything button. WBZ's Paula Eben had the chance to speak to Louisa about her investigation. Uh, so, Louisa Muller, let's talk about your story, which has had tremendous traction online uh, since it aired last week. <clears throat> it has really taken off on all of our socials, all of our channels. People have been telling pollsters that this subject is very important to them, the migrant crisis. And you had the idea to go to our northern border with Canada uh, what was the first germ of an idea for you uh, that there might be a story there? So thanks for having me, Paula. Um, interestingly, the little piece of land that we went to go visit is called the Swanton Sector. The U.S. border with Canada is massive, right? It's 5,500 miles. This is 295 miles, part of New York, New Hampshire, and Vermont. And the chief of that sector, the chief of the border patrol there, had been putting out small alarms on social media saying that they were arresting record numbers of migrants who were crossing the northern border in those three states uh, in fiscal year 2023 and the trend continuing upward in fiscal year 2024 for them. So we were curious what's going on to the north and is it a similar profile to what's going on in the south or is this a, a totally different profile and what right. we found was that this is a this is a bit of a different animal right although these are people obviously who are going to be dispersed throughout new england most likely if they're entering through the northern border they're probably going to stay in our greater boston new england area um i think it really did change the game when a lot of those migrants were shipped on buses or flights to martha's vineyard new york city chicago other cities people in northern big cities began to realize the impact that's been going on in Texas and New Mexico, Arizona. So when you reached out to them, were they willing to talk about this? Was it a push at all? Or was it sort of like, yeah, we need help? So they weren't willing to say they need help, but I, I think attention. they're very interested in attention, uh, certainly, because just to give you an idea of the numbers, um, in fiscal year 2023, Border Patrol in the Swanton sector arrested 7,000 individuals trying to cross the border illegally, and that was a number more than the previous 12 years combined wow. their job. Now, they put it in perspective, you know, any given day on the southern border, 6,000 people can be encountered. Mm -hmm. So these are, again, sort of apples and oranges, but they're raising alarms due to the nature of the border to the north, there are no fences up there. Mm -hmm. uh, and again, the type of activity they are seeing. And so what type was it? So first of all, they're seeing a wide array of different nationalities. Um, the most, the biggest number of, of people are coming from Mexico, roughly 49%, mm -hmm. but they've arrested um, people from 66 different countries, Bangladesh, India, Haiti, Venezuela, they are seeing asylum seekers. So people who say they have a credible threat of danger in their home country trying to come here. But mostly they're seeing people who do not want to be detected. So they do not want to be caught in right. asylum. They want yeah. to come through the border undetected. Um, in addition, they are seeing a lot of human smuggling. Wow. Wow. So first of all, the majority, you said 49% from Mexico. So they're coming, instead of encountering the problems at the southern border, they're going to Canada to try to get into the north for, you know, so they won't be detected. But these are people, you're saying, it's, it's not as though there's a formality to coming and requesting asylum. These are people just trying to get through the border through the woods or outside and how do these border patrol agents as you were saying if it's such a vast area do they have surveillance cameras how do they begin to monitor all of that human activity so they're doing the best they can and obviously mm -hmm. they were unwilling to give us a crystal clear picture of how much technology they have or manpower mm -hmm. uh, for security mm -hmm. reasons but they have um uh 
drones. They have physical patrols. Um, obviously, they use canines. They use a type of ground sensor that's installed uh, in the woods mm -hmm. along this 295 mile stretch that detects activity. Uh, and there is a centralized dispatch center in Swanton, Vermont, wow. so that if any of these sensors go off, uh, they'll get an alert. And actually, that is what happened while we were up there. Um, in the middle of our tour, mm -hmm. the dispatch center received a sensor that went off. We're talking, I mean, extreme. it was a rainy day. Uh, it was extremely remote. There's a pond that straddles the border between Vermont and Canada, mm -hmm. and in the woods right next to it was a Lithuanian national who walked across the border uh, without any belongings, uh, but simply his Lithuanian passport. Wow. And an, and an alert went off. A and an alert went off. went off and Border Patrol was called. And I should note, they also rely heavily on calls from locals because, you know, this is a pro property, much like the southern border, there's a lot of private property, farms, uh, and other and other homesteads that abut the border. Right. So, and so you were you were in the car with them, uh, and you went racing to this. You know, were they talking through it with you, like how they feel when they encounter one of these people? I mean, it's you know, all of us know we have to have national security, we have to have a border control, but there is human compassion for these people who are clearly fleeing horrific circumstances, and they're willing to do this climb through rivers and ponds and walk through the woods with no passport. You know, what did the uh, Border Patrol officers tell you about, you know, when they when they have to actually confront one of these people? How does it go down? Yeah, well, they're, I mean, these guys are professionals. The, the agent in charge of Swan Sector had been in the sector for over 20 years. Um, and there are different challenges that they meet when they encounter folks. There is the safety to the agent, mm -hmm. which is, you know, when you're encountering human smugglers who do not want to be caught, there is a threat of um, physical assault. There's a threat of, they said they, they'd they had agents who were nearly rammed by smuggling vehicles trying it's to- It's a leave. very, very dangerous um, job. Yeah. And there's, and there's a terror there. They have encountered people who are on the terror watch list. And I want to go into that, but in terms yeah. of that compassion portion, they are still seeing yeah. family units people who are trying to escape a horrific situation in their home country. And this agent in charge, um, you know, he's a, he's a dad. And he told me that he had, he has seen a uh, two month old children mm. who have made a journey from a country very far away mm. in the snow, uh, in crossing r frozen rivers. I mean, it's a very, very challenging situation. In fact, um, in addition to this rise of numbers, which is alarming, there's been a heartbreaking number of fatalities yeah. of migrants trying to cross the border. There were a lot 10 of people, people. Will die. Yeah. Um, and it shows the, just the level of de desperation. Yeah. And horrific. for the first time on the southern border, they are they've long put up signs saying, if you need help, please call us. Well, for the first time, the northern border is putting up signs in French and Spanish wow. saying, if you are a migrant and you are in danger, you should call 911. Wow. Let's talk about the human smuggling mm -hmm. because what uh, did, were you able to learn about that and the level of human smuggling that's happening at the northern border? So first of all, the nature of people flying into Canada mm -hmm. um, in some, in many cases must involve some sort of organization. Yeah. So um, they were unable to tell me specifically whether this is linked to the drug cartels or multiple other organizations, but there are certainly organizations that are working to get people across. Mm -hmm. So one of the things that the agents are trained to look out for are suspicious vehicles that are pulling up to the border to try and bring people uh, mm -hmm. across and then obviously drive them to a more populated area, Boston, New York. Um, and so they say they will often see vans, vehicles that can hold a lot of people. Mm -hmm. um, and they will, you know, that is their first clue. And are they on the U.S. side of the border ready to pick people up? Yes, they're on. The, and you have to imagine, you know, this is um, this is Beecher Falls, Vermont, mm -hmm. a tiny little place where, you know, people, everybody knows everybody. Um, and where there's one or two crossroads. Right. So suddenly a van pulls up 
and a whole group of people is piling in from having crossed the border, the local residents are going to notice. Yes. It's, it's no secret. All right, Louise Muller, I'm going to stop you there. And we're going to take a quick break and be more, uh, have more of our conversation about the northern border on the other side of this break. Sounds great. Thanks.